So, do you know what would be really nice? <clears throat> because at the moment, with uh, everything that's going on, um, there's a lot of tension in the air. Yeah, Everybody I speak. Oh, so wait, hold on. Let's turn. Let's turn off the. Um... No, come down, don't see. If you don't mind no. turning. Lindsay's done it. So there's a lot of tension in the air with what's going on. So what's really nice is a, a little chant we can all do together. And it's really simple. And basically we all just say, all that I am, I surrender. And we just sing that, we just sing that together. And it goes like this. All that I am, I surrender. All that I am, I surrender. Just join in. All that I am, I surrender. 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 Thank you. <clears throat> Our guests. Yeah, we're going to be talking about gongs today while we have this moment. Yeah. So welcome everybody. Can we unmute everybody just so we can say a communal hello? How do we unmute everyone? Everyone, everyone, everyone. Everyone. Hello. 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 Hello there. Hello. Nice Hello. Wow. Hi, Don. Hey, Don. Claudio. Hello. Hi, Don. Oh. Hi, Lindsay. Hi. Good hey. morning, Alexandra. Hello. So, if you know anybody on here, take this as an opportunity just to say hello to your friends across the world who maybe you don't get the opportunity to talk to. <laughs> Is anyone there? Hi, Cassie. Hello, Hal. Yeah. <laughs> hey. Hi, Jean. Hi, Jean. <laughs> Claudio. Hi, Claudia. Hello. I met you in December Hello. last year in the city. <laughs> nice to see you. Hi, Julie. Hi, Julie. Yeah. I'm doing it. Oh, oh it's so nice. nice. Oh. Didn't see. Okay. <laughs> So, so unfortunately, what we, we have to do, to do is, is I can, I can hear myself, myself coming, coming back, back yes, uh, from your room. So we have to mute everybody for a moment. I hope that's okay. 
It's just. Uh, can everyone hear me? Yeah. Everything comes back through your speakers back to me um, when we're speaking. And so it, it gets into like this big, almost like an early Stanley Kubrick film with lots of echoing and things like that. So <laughs> we're trying to avoid that. But we do want to hear from you and we'll bring you in and out with questions when we can. So if you type the questions to, to Yell or me, and then we'll put the questions in and then we'll unmute you so you can talk to Broder and Innes or Don or me or anything, you know, um, as we move through. Um, so, so lovely to see everybody again and so happy that everyone's joining us. Um, Don? Yes, sir. Yeah. So, anything you want to say this morning to everybody? No, I'm, I'm very excited about this. The possibilities yeah. are fantastic. You realize that we don't have to fly on an airplane anymore. We don't have to go anywhere. <laughs> We just need to have a nice, comfortable chair, and we're yeah. there. So uh, and the only thing I haven't got save everybody a lot of money. This it's true. Time. Do you have a coffee? I haven't got a coffee or a tea. I've got a coffee. Should have got one. Sorry, I can't. Oh. So we're really excited today. We've got um, our guests, our first guests so far, uh, Broder and Ines from Otakon Gongs. Broder and Ines, if you could give us a quick wave so everyone can see you. Hey. Oh, woo -woo. Um, and we're going to talk to Broder and Ines today about uh, lots of things to do with gong making um, and you know their company, what they do, you know, how it happens, what materials are. But um, if you've got any questions, like I said, fire them in and, and we'll weave them in. And um, we'll also, you know, if you've got anything you want to talk to them about, unmute you so you can do that as well. Great. So, Don. Yes, sir. Um, first question of the day we thought um, for Broder and Ines is, how, how did it happen? How did you end up being gong makers? How does that, how does one become a gong maker? You know, did you, were you at school? And, and like, this, like a virgin, get a child. <laughs> okay, great. Yeah. So normally I'm engineer for yeah, what's the name? Water buildings. Um, um, and I has no contact to gongs. Uh, so, and a friend of mine was working for Heiste, and they were searching for a new gong master uh, at the factory. And in his mind, he always thought about me to be the right person for this job. And then I make a work for two weeks at Feiste, the training, and decided I don't want to be the gong maker at uh, Feiste because when something is going wrong in this uh, contract, um, I will be in a dead end because nobody needs a gong maker and I'm an engineer and I won't get a job as an engineer. So, and then I worked for another company and uh, after a while, I, the business goes down and they kicked me out. So I was looking for a new job and asked at Peiste and they said, no, we have already one. We don't need you. So I searched for another job. And when I had a date for an interview, um, Peister came to me and asked if I'm still interested to be the gong master for them. And um, at, at, at the end, I started to work for Peister. So okay. that was my way to the gongs. Cool. And um, when you were there, you, you, you kind of, you learned your craft. Was, uh, you learnt you learnt the skills. Yeah. 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 Heisty, yeah. yeah. Um, were you working with Walter at that point? Yeah, Walter was my master, but after a while he gets ill. And then came Rudy back from his retirement one time a week. And then he was my second master, so I learned from two. Oh, okay. So, Don, you were friends with Walter as well, I believe, and Aidan, who's on here. Yes, yes, I remember Rudy as well. Yeah. 
wonderful, wonderful beings that made the gongs for us those days. And uh, some of the gongs I have in my, my warehouse are from Rudy's gongs and, and Walter's gongs. Uh, but now we have so many gong masters who are makers now. They make gongs out of aluminum, they tin. What's the difference between the different metals? Um, are we going to have a new uh, amalgam of metals, a new alloy coming up? Uh, what do you think? I don't think there's a new alloy. Uh, okay, Martin Blaze is one gong maker here from the north of Germany. He is building gongs from titanium. That could be another uh, possibility. Heist is building the Bronx gongs now, but uh, it's not a new material. Um, so I don't uh, see a new alloy for the gongs, but maybe we'll find one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At the moment, what, what material are, are the, the gongs that we're buying from you and mine all and Paisley? What, what's the material, brother? This is uh, nickel silver or alpaca. It's the same material but to different names. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's an alloy of copper, zinc, and nickel. Yeah. So yeah. there's no silver in there? No. <laughs> but uh, it, it looks uh, like silver when you polish it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So you can see it at the brilliant gongs from Paiste. They have a silver yeah. shining, but they're yeah. just polished. Mm hmm. Um, so I've got a question here from, from one of the uh, group, from Claudio, and um, Claudio is asking about the uh, uh, Vesta gong. Yeah. Do you make a, yeah. Yeah, I, I build a Vesta gong, but uh, I can't really tell something to that. Uh, I think it was Mark Swan, he came to me and uh, asked me to build him his gong with a frequency, and he called it, it's a Vesta gong. So I said, yeah, it's possible for me to make that. And the I, frequency was calculated also from, from Cousteau. Yeah, so okay. um, I, I can't tell you the special things to uh, the Western Gong. It's, for me, it's a planet gong with a, another frequency. And his name is Western. Yeah. 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 So um, while we're on the subject of planet gongs, Don, it's something that we talk about quite often, um, you know, which planet gong to choose, you know, why you choose it. Um, how do you decide what planet a gong becomes? Oh, I decided uh, it's from the orders of my customers. <laughs> <laughs> if they want um, a, a gong in that frequency, I have to calculate what size I need for that. But for the normal planetary gongs, I know I have for the moon, the 24 inch, uh, for the Venus, the 24 inch. And uh, now we can make it one octave lower. So we make them in also in 40 inch, uh, but the others like Mars and Mercury, they're 32 inch big, but that uh, belongs to the frequency of the planets. So mm -hmm. when you say you want a Mars, I will build a 32 inch gong and tune him to Mars. And when mm -hmm. I have luck, he will sound well. <laughs> Great. Yeah. I hope it's a Anything... bit more than luck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I've seen Broder making gongs. There's a lot more than luck goes in there. There's a lot of craftsmanship. Um, so Don, um, while we're talking about um, the kind of different frequencies of gongs. Um, what? How do you feel about the whole planet series thing? Is is it because years ago, obviously, there was just a gong, wasn't there? When you were first playing, I think it was a, a wonderful idea to sell more gongs. Uh, uh, this this is one thing, but if you notice that people are making uh, their own creation gongs, for instance, Broder's and Ines have a workshop where you learn to make your own gong. Mm -hmm. So they're really spawning, I think, a lot of new gong makers out there who are able to make gongs. The gong uh, master makers that we have, like Broder, um, 
there's not many of them around. And so, but in the future, um, we're going to be uh, having more and more gongs that need to be available. Right now, I think that if I heard something from Broder, I would have probably have to wait until I was dead. <laughs> because the, the demand is so high right at the moment. Demand is so high right now. How, how long, Broder, do we have to wait before we get a gong of Oh, Somebody. at the moment, I think it's about four to six months. Oh, I see that. I, shorter. I hope. I hope so. <laughs> I, I think in the moment we have to wait if you order a gong uh, for three to four months. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Okay, we have a problem with, um, with some gongs. For example, a Niburu always needs longer. Why ever? I don't know, but uh, in Iburo needs about five to six months. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Okay. Um, so I've got a question from Alice, uh, Alessandra Montana. Um, Alessandra's there. Where are you? Hey. Um, I'm going to ask you a question for you, Alessandra, if that's okay. Um, is there a difference uh, in the gong making? between back in the days when the request was not so high and how it is now? Is there a difference in the process from then to now? Um, no. I mean... Not, not in the process and uh, uh, not for me. For me, it's important that the gong is sounding well uh, until before he won't leave my factory. And I hope the other gong makers will do it in the same way. So. There's no other process in that way. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so can you talk us uh, through the process a little bit? Because uh, wh what do you start with? I mean, um, what, how does it begin? First, we receive the blanks from the metal producer. And uh, when we have the blanks, we start with making a middle point to make our circle lines on the blank. It's uh, helping lines for us to uh, know where we have to start to hammering the rim, where we have to make the tuning rounds, where we have to make the scraping. So when we have the lines on the blank, we clean the blanks because from the metal producing, there's uh, rests of oil and something others on the blank. And when you start to glow, we will have a lot of marks from this liquids. And um, when we cl have cleaned the gongs, well, then we start to glow the rim. Um, and when we have glowed the rim, the blank is cooling down. And when it's cold, we can start to make the hammering. And when we make the hammering, we start to build the rim. And uh, when we have Finish the rim, we write the number into the gong. Uh, when we, and, uh, and skill the, and he has a one. Um, make. <laughs> make the holes for the, uh, for the. Uh, for the rope. Yeah, for the rope. And when we have uh, this fatty, uh, finished, then we start to make the tuning rounds for the ground tuning. And uh, then we hang it up and check the sound. When we think we are on a good way, we make the scraping of the gong, then the cleaning and the waxing and, or polishing of the gong. And at the end, we make the fine tuning. But the fine tuning takes most mostly or often is, is the same time than the building. Mm. So, yeah. So what, um, of, of the whole process, because I've, I've kind of seen you, I've seen you doing the tuning um, before, and it seems like it's like, you, you know, a quite a refined process. And from it, what I can see, there's yeah, not there's many a, people who can actually do that. I don't think that so many people are uh, able to do that, but um, it's a process. You you make 
hammer beats into the on the gong and you change the tensions in the gong and so the sound changed and when you stop hammering the tension have to settle down so i know exactly if the sound is stable uh, in the first time at the next day so I, I have to stop my hammering wait for one day and check the sound and then I can say, okay, I'm happy with the sound or I'm not happy with the sound. And when I'm not happy with the sound, I start again with the hammering. Have to stop, have to wait for one day minimum, and then check the sound. And so on and so on and so on. And when the sound is good, the gong can go out. Otherwise, it will stay in my factory. So wow. I have gongs there so here. Uh, the first gong I built in my self employment uh, it's still here. I'm not happy with the sound of this gong, so it's about uh, nine years now. But me, we, <laughs> meanwhile, we decided the first gong will stay because yeah. the first gong wanted to stay. Yeah, I, ca I can't imagine you would let that one go. <laughs> okay. It's like your first child, right? In one way, yeah. <laughs> but my first child was a gong I built at Paiste. <laughs> yeah, yeah, your very first child back there, yeah. How lovely. So you, you said just then, and I suppose a lot of people are, are wondering this, you leave the gong for a day and then go back to it. Why do you leave it for a day? Because this tension has to settle down. The, 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 the material is going, or the tension is going slowly through the material. So when I uh, make a fresh hammering and wait for and, and check the sound and wait for 10 minutes, after 10 minutes, the sound changed already. So wow. the tension have to settle down and then you can really hear the sound of the gong. Okay. So there's a relationship between you and the gong yes. when you're making it. Yes. And as the best case, I, I remember what I did already with the gong. So Okay. Yeah, it's a lot of yeah. work with my brain. It's it's not always yeah. the same work on on every gong. Every gong is is a kind of unique, and um, Broda has to decide what what's needed in the process of the fine tuning, depending on the reaction of the gong from the last fine tuning. So it's a process mm. of thinking and hammering and finding out what's needed. And what's the mm. right thing? It's it's uh, the same with the uh, with childs. You can't say when you say this to your child, you will learn this in the right way. You have to find a way with your child to say, okay, that's the best way for him to learn something or to react in my way I want it. And with the gongs, it's uh, similar. So, wow, I think it's so interesting to hear you speak like that about. Um, about the making process, you know, um, because what we see when we receive a gong, if we don't always get to test it before we buy it, you know, if we're lucky, we get to play it before we buy it. Yeah. So it's nice to know when it arrives that there's been this, it's really nice to know about the process when it arrives, that, that information I think is quite valuable. Um, so you were talking about the scrapings and, and I've seen you do the scrapings, and yeah. I know that different manufacturers scrape their gongs in different ways, but what's the significance of the scrapings? What does it do? Why do you do it? Uh, the most important thing is the optic. Yeah. Okay. And uh, because when you have marks on the blank or uh, little scratches or something like this, you can find this for second. Hide. hide them a little bit behind the scraping and another thing is uh, because you make the material a little bit thinner so the wave can be bigger so the sound is a little bit deeper and we all mm. love deep sounds this is true yeah we do normally yes that's my experience that the people love the bigger gongs the deeper gongs and um, yeah Cool. So um, the the scrapings, I remember when we were talking about them, we had this idea that they were almost like the furrows in a field, like when a field has been ploughed. If you were to look very close, there's kind of this pattern 
on the gong where you've scraped some of the um, some of the metal off. Does that create a larger surface area because you've kind of put these tiny grooves in it? Does it does it make the surface area kind of bigger because now it's like this? I, I never thought in that direction, but yeah, maybe. Yeah, because I remember you telling me that that sometimes when you've done the scrapings, the pitch changes slightly. Slowly, please again. We're not sure what you're You're asked. Sometimes you told me once um, that after the scrapings, yeah. you've done the scraping, yeah. sometimes the pitch of the gong changes slightly. The pitch. Get yeah, they, it's it's going deeper. That's what I said before. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. You make the material thinner, and uh, so the movement of the gong can be bigger. So you can make a bigger wave, and a bigger wave means you have a lower note. That's what I told mm -hmm. before. Mm. Because of the um, scraping, the sound is going like a quarter of a tone deeper. So, mm -hmm. um, but the character of the gong normally doesn't change. Yeah. From the okay. Don. Yes. Um, out of all the planets, what's your favorite planet? <laughs> My favorite planet. Well, yeah, favorite gong to play. I, I think that I look at it in a different way. That every every gong, if you say an orchestra gong or a flat gong. Uh, Practically any gong is a uh, music of the spheres. They produce music of the spheres, and that each one is tuned naturally, well, or on purpose, let's say, uh, to a certain frequency. If you get a gong, and it's an orchestra gong, and it hasn't been tuned to become a planet gong that we know about, or it hasn't been selected as that, then um, what does it resonate? Well, it resonates to some star that we know not of. In other words, there are known planets and things that we use in astrology to develop a language. But then there are every gong is one of the stars in the sky. So let's say I go out, take my 28 inch gong or uh, outside it, and it's an orchestra gong and I'm playing it outside in the starry sky at nighttime and I'm hitting it and uh, like this here, which of those stars are relating to it? Because though time or space exists when you play the gong, everything's okay. in the here and now. So I don't know which of those little stars are twinkling to the sound of the frequency because they match it exactly. But if you take a sun gong or a moon gong out there and play it, then you have a direct relationship with a specific planet. But otherwise, oh, they're all happy that you're playing the gong because it resonates. There's so many different gongs in the sky. <laughs> oh, that's lovely. It, it kind of makes me feel, uh, makes us feel nice about um, that even the gongs that aren't tuned to a planet, they all belong somewhere. They've all got a a connection with some celestial being. It's lovely. Um, brother, um, when you're tuning the gongs and you leave them for a day and you come back to them, and sometimes you say, that gong's not leaving the factory till I'm happy. Yeah. What are you looking for? What are you looking for? Yeah, it belongs on the gong I, I built. Um, the... For, uh, for example, a symphonic gong has as a sound picture a tree. So it has to grow from the roots to the tram to the chrome. And, um, and that must be okay for me, for my ears that I think, yeah, I want or I like to hear that sound. I, in the best case, I, I want to play more on the gong. That's a, that's oh. a good, Thing that I I'm like to listen to the gong and I like to play on the gong. Um, then he has to be in the right 
range uh, for the notes. The symphonic congress had not a special note, but it is in a, in a range um, about a half tone. So that means that the bigger gong sounds deeper than a small one. From the physics, it's possible to make it in a, another way, but it makes no sense that a small gong says boom, and a big gong says ping. So okay, uh, yeah, yeah. But the most important thing I think is that I like the sound of the gong, and my feelings to that is good. The phono planetary, uh, of course, has to be the right frequency. Uh, but it's also the same. I, I have to like the sound. So, and I, yeah. I'm happy with the sound. Um, my feelings, good, are good to the sound, and then it's okay for me to send them out. Mm. So the the so frequency is is one one thing, but the harmonies all around the gong. There's no no whistling, no screaming, so that. Uh. That it, the gong makes us feel good. That's that's the 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 aim, I think. Yeah, yeah. So it, it's an emotional. Once you get past the science of it, there's an emotional thing going on, a technical and emotional. You you can't measure it yet. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I can just measure the frequency, but uh, the other thing is with my body, my feelings, my ears, my yeah sense so yeah that's nice so when you're tuning a gong hey ines a question for you when when broder's been tuning gongs all day uh, if he has a tuning day is he different on tuning days to normal days <laughs> i don't i don't think there is a special tuning day but um there was a a time in his self-employment I was wondering in the evening what's wrong with Broda. And um, it took a time to find out um, that was the time when he introduced the 48, uh, 40 inch gongs. And when he built the 40 inch gongs in the evening, he was just tired. Uh, but uh. I had to learn he's not. Um, on a, on a bad day, he's he's just tired because uh, he says the to to build a forty inch gong is about the double of the work of a thirty six inch gong, and so that for for me, but it was to uh, the the way to learn it. What's wrong with Broda? Uh, there was nothing wrong. It was just forty inch. <laughs> I, I yeah. was not angry on her, but I, I didn't speak with her, so she was wondering. Yeah. <laughs> but I, 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 I don't think there's a, a, a just tuning day. They they mix all the days because they said you can't do the fine tuning because you. Have, you have to listen very exactly to the gongs, and it's very, um, it's a very hard work to do this. So they 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 part the day to yeah. make a fine tuning and then to build gongs. So it's yeah. always a mixture. To, yeah, to have a mixture for your body, it's it's not good to build the whole days uh, the rim. And then after the after two weeks, my shoulders broken, and uh, just to make the fine tuning, it's a lot of work with the brain. You are tired uh, very very quick when you do an only fine tuning. It's um, it's uh, it's yeah, it's a hard work in another way. It's not with the body, but uh, it's it's um, yeah, um, takes a Mental. lot of power. So yeah, yeah, of course. John, have you ever considered making a gong yourself? Have you ever tried it? Uh, no, but I've, uh, I've watched and I've seen people make their gongs like that. But personally, no. Have you? I think you have. I, <laughs> you yes, have I did. You. Didn't I? Yeah, you, you laughed at me at my gong that I made. I was very proud of it. Yeah, well... <laughs> The gong represents your, I guess, your subconscious. <laughs> Mine wasn't very good then. 
It was, I got a piece of drums. It was interesting. That's polite. Thank you. Yeah, it was fun. I had great fun doing it. And I would love at some point to go over. I'm sure everybody knows. You can go, uh, uh, and there's a huge waiting list for it, but I think it's worth, if you want to make a gong and go and do the process, um, Ines and Broder um, offer that. You can go to the factory and you can make a gong and leave with it, um, which is phenomenal. I've, I've seen the pictures. It looks like great fun. So um, how, would, how would people find out about doing that um, to come and make a gong with you? Yeah, the way is just to, to give us an email. I have a waiting list. Um, Sometimes the waiting list is very long. We do that course once a year. Um, meanwhile, we do it twice because lots of people want to go uh, through the, the sizes of the gong. So we have um, courses for beginners and further levels. Um, we decided to stop with 30, 32 inches now. Uh, that wow. was the biggest gong a student uh, ever built because after that, it's, it's not honest to say they will have a good gong after just one weekend. Um, so yeah. we, we decided to stop with that. So if one, uh, someone wants to join us, so give us an email. I put your name on the waiting list and then I come back to you when I can offer you uh, a place. Yeah, that's it. Awesome. We, normally we, we meet on Friday. Everybody can have a look on each other, see who's there. Also, uh, or normally I have a Facebook group so the people can uh, find travel partners, share a car or something like this. And then, yeah, in the morning of the Saturday at nine o'clock, we, we start. And the first day took, uh, takes normally 12 hours. Or more. Some, sometimes more. Normally we have to finish because we want to go to a restaurant to have dinner. And if we come later, there won't be a dinner for us. So we have to stop then. And then uh, the second day is the fine tuning and cosmetics for the gongs. Uh, the people are very creative. It's great to see, amazing. Uh, on the one hand, the people connect to each other, have fun in our new factory. Now we have a sound room. The people play the gongs, have fun with the gongs and share their uh, different points and um, how they, they, they work with the gongs, how they feel the gongs, um, they play for each other and they um, are connected in what they are doing here with the gongs. And um, yeah, join in their creativity. So it's a very nice thing to, to meet all the people here and be connected with them. Awesome. Um, so um, I was just trying to share some pictures with everybody just from um, from when I came. I don't know. Can I just share my screen and show people? Or, um, I wanted to show people some pictures of when I came to visit you guys. I came a couple of times. It was so much fun. And I've just got some odd pictures um, that I'd like to, to, sh to show. Uh, Lindsay's trying to work it out for me. Um, while we're doing that, um, I know that um, uh, Broder and Ines, you make um, like a Thor's hammer gong and a heart gong um, and a tree of life. Um, can everyone see these pictures? Not yet. Oh, no, not yet. <laughs> and the, the tree of life. Um, where did you get where do you get the ideas from? I mean, what what spurred the idea to make a, a gong like with the Thor's hammer on it? <laughs> and you know, we have to start in another way. The first thing was a heart gong. Uh, okay. Oh, that's in my old factory. Yeah. <laughs> Can you see that's your old factory? Okay, yeah. yeah. And, when? and the first thing was that the customer came and uh, asked me if it's possible to build a heart a or a love gong, gong in, the, in the way of making a heart, like I make my heart gong now. 
And I said, I don't know that, but I can try that. And so we tried to make a gong with this hard form and it worked, but I didn't know how love sounds. And uh, I decided to call him a hard gong because of the hard beat. And um, so there's a characteristic when you play a gong normally with a hard beat, you stop it uh, to yeah. make it boom, 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 boom. Um, and the hard gong you can play without stopping in this way. And you get a lot of overtones. And for me, this is a blood that is uh, flowing through your body. And uh, so, so was the creating <laughs> of the hard gong. Yeah. I, I've, I've got to say, when I first saw the heart gong, I was, I, was, I was blown away. I was like, how is that even possible? And I did have a picture of one, and I haven't, um, I haven't put it on there. But um, you can see here, this is Broder uh, in his old workshop. Um, that's one of the blanks you were talking about earlier, Broder. Yeah. Uh, isn't it? You know, when you start to work with the blanks. Yeah, um, so that's the blowing of the blank. Yeah, that's how it first starts. Um, there's Lou there, look, <laughs> in the back. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you, you take the blank. I think there's a blank when you when you first brought it out to show us. Um, and um, that's you that you were showing me how to do the scrapings there. Yeah. Which is very, it's really hard. I couldn't believe how much hard work it was trying to do that. Um, but yeah, it was really interesting. And from what I remember, this is Walter's <laughs> old hammer for making the 80-inch gongs. Yeah. The to big make gongs. a big sound creation earth gong. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So obviously I had to pick that up. <laughs> I'll play with it. And, oh, there's your heart gong in the back there. Yeah. yeah. The beautiful heart gong you were talking about. So the Thor's hammer, this one here. Yeah. Um, You've told us how you came about with the with the with the heart gong, but what 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 brought the thoughts hammering? Where did that come from? Was that yeah, just a particularly bad morning when you woke up and thought? Rah! No, uh, when I built the heart gong, I said, okay, it's possible to possible to make different forms, uh, and the thoughts hammer or Mjolnir is. Um, the thing that a lot of people wear like a amulet to have luck. And um, Thor is protecting the human beings with this hammer. And he's making thunder with this hammer. And, um, and there's a, it's from the Nordic mythology. Uh, mythology. And um, we have a trade center from the Vikings close by. It's about 30 kilometers far, far away from us. So um, we decided to make a Mjölnir gong um, or Thor's hammer gong. Try it if it's working and he should make a deep thunder sound. Hopefully protects the human beings. Yeah. Oh, wow. And, and another thing is, um, Thor is working with the hammer. I'm also working with my hammer and uh, Thor never missed his target, and I shouldn't miss my target. So, <laughs> yeah, another I mean, connection to to Thor. Uh, this is a bit of a Thor's hammer. I see you've got here. I remember seeing you do this. I didn't and get getting it, it right, right on every time. And of course, oh. here's your beautiful dog. Oh, yeah. So, he passed. Um, I know. I know, but it's such a beautiful uh, thing to, to have there at the factory, yeah. having lots of cuddles. Yeah. yeah, it was lovely. Three are left. Yeah, yeah. I remember you brought um, you brought some dogs down to Madrid. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> Don. Yeah. Um, have you played the Thor's Hammer Gong and the Heart Gong? Have you had the chance? Yes, I have. But uh, I was saying, you know, he he made my gong, the mirror gong. The mirror gongs for Minol. Of course, you make all Minol's gongs, brother. Yeah. Yes. 
And so um, it was. It's a wonderful gong. I don't know if you have one there, but it's uh, the mirror gong, the eight corners of heaven gong. Uh, mm. Yeah, I look at the gong and maybe differently because we have. Um, I think that the idea of tantric yoga, of being able to use the mirror, in, in the way I look at it. Uh, is really good. So uh, he made this gong where people can actually look and do trafficam on their own eyes. Uh, there is one thing though, is that once the gong begins to swing, well, this is like, well, you, you can get a little bit uh, seasick a little bit if you, if you have to close your eyes after a while because it's like being in a boat. The whole world is like moving around like this, but uh, I quite like that. Like you have a storm, yeah, yeah. But the idea is that it's a wonderful, wonderful gong to be able to look at yourself while you're playing it. And um, and also, tell us about Tratakam Don. Yes, and the person tell us about side it. can look into their eyes so that it's really. It's not like quite like white tantric yoga, but I call it clear mirror yoga. And uh, so this is very good people, especially in therapeutic situations. Or the other uh, ways as well, because you know, the eight corners of heaven would be just simply the, all the energies that are coming in from the universe from all directions into the gong. So, the uh, it's a it's a wonderful gong for using colored lighting now we're mm. pressing now into a uh, use of color and light uh with your gong sound so it's it's it's, it's in that respect as well also to be able to play and see behind your back while you're playing with your back to the audience is another plus. So it's a real Virgo type garden. Virgos. Um, so the eight corners of heaven, the those symbols on there, everybody who sees my mirror gong asks the same question. What do the symbols mean? Well, we know they're the eight directions. All right. So, uh, now you can then you can superimpose anything else you want on that, knowing that it's the uh, relates to the eight directions, which is north and which is south, east and west. It's a mystery because they're runic uh, trigrams and hexagrams are involved here in these little amulets that we see around the gong. So it's a mystery language of the Ruin people. So, uh, the gong is, is a mystery in itself. It's not necessary always to solve those mysteries. Sometimes it's better let them just be the cloud of mystery that draws you into so that you mm. can begin to be more aware of certain things mm. in life. So mm. anyway, but, but that's my, I've got a lot of different gongs that I have on the, but I can't have, they won't make my gongs because everybody's making their own gongs now, or they're having their gongs, signature gongs made. So we're in a new transvolution of the original evolution of the gongs in society. Now people can make a gong according to uh, what, what they want. And, and Broder, of course, you give him an idea, he'll make it. Mm. I remember seeing Don in Madrid, Broder and Ines brought down a huge um, Uranus gong. Uh, Uranus, you brought the, this huge yeah. Uranus down. How big was that? Yeah, there was, uh, Don asked me if it's possible to make uh, the Uranus gong bigger because we have a time where the Uranus is, or the age of the Uranus, where the Uranus is very important. And I uh, said, yeah, I can try it to make it one octave lower. So we will get a bigger gong. That's what I told at the start of this interview, uh, that we also built the 24 inch planet gongs also as a 40 inch planet gong. 
this is uh, of course also the Uranus. Yeah. Yeah. I remember it was it was a fantastic, it was a magnificent thing down there. Um, so, what's the biggest gong that you've made, brother? It's a question yeah, from the 80, Michelle. Eighty-inch gong. Oh, the eighty. It's, a, it's a, from the time at Paiste. We built all sizes, so also uh, eighty-inch gongs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I will do that again. But I, I'm. Uh, I want to, or I need money first to buy the material for 80 inch gong. Now we start okay. with the 50 inch gong and uh, the 60, uh, and maybe in the future we will also 80 inch gongs. And how many and, people oh. to build this gong? Or what was the question, Bob? So how many people to build an 80 inch? Okay. Uh, be the best thing is to have uh, four people. Three are turning the gong and one is making the hammering. Okay. But uh, you can do it also with three people, but it's harder work. You can make it with more people, but uh, you, oft don't oft uh, you often don't have so much people together. Yeah. And um, yeah, the best thing uh, for me for, to make an 80 inch gong is with four people. And I'm, okay. I'm, I really, I'm really looking forward for the time we will have an 80 inch gong in our sound room, especially the 80 inch water gong. Oh, God, <laughs> pass out with, <laughs> I'm going to pass out with excitement. Yeah. Oh. Well, well, when you do that, please let me oh, let, let know. Oh, God, I mean, I'll, I'll walk there. <laughs> that's incredible um okay so we've got we've got 10 minutes left on and um i just thought for the last 10 minutes we could just talk about your journey into playing the gong um how did that begin well uh you know, there's, there's a lot of beginnings. To begin at the beginning maybe is a little far-fetched, but uh, okay. when, when I was uh, in the days of the, the, the uh, uh, flower children in the, in the 60s, there was a guy called Christopher, and uh, he used to hang his gongs into trees in the Love Inns in Los Angeles. So Christopher's tree was his name, and I did meet him. He's, he's very old now, a uh, wonderful guy. He was my first uh, inspiration. Um, when I found out it was him, he was from Big Sur at the time. And so from that moment on, uh, they stuck in my mind. And then immediately after I saw Christopher Tree's trees hanging from a tree at the Love Inn in Los Angeles, I met Yogi Bhajan, and when I went to his first class in, in 69, I noticed he had a gong, a 30, a 28 inch high loe, a paiste gong with the Mandarin Chinese characters on it, and a floor stand, a uh, silver floor stand in the yoga studio. Um, and he also had a, a conch, and he had a, a bell, an Amish bell that he rung. So that in the first time that I heard the gong, him playing it, he also included these other three instruments as well with it. So immediately, you know, what are you going to do? You have to read the writing on the wall. I had to get a gong, I had to get a conch, I had to get a bell. I was, I was totally, at that moment, I jumped into the waters and began to, uh, eventually teach Kundalini Yoga, produce teachers for him. But it was mm. because of that, that gong. And we had been programmed, you know, in the United <coughs> States before then, we had the gong show with Chuck Barris, you know, and uh, that was just a comedy. And we also had J. Arthur Rank from your, your place in England that brought it mm. over. So we were prepped for the gong. And then yeah. finally, when we realized that for 
3,000, 6,000 years, I suppose, with, that the gong, uh, the secret of the gong has not been exposed, that all the gurus would use the gong in secret, you see. Um, mm. so w when the breakthrough happened, and what attracted me to Yogi Bhaja was simply this, is that I wanted to learn the secrets of doing a completed Kriya in yoga, like the one Yogananda gave out. So when he came over and was saying, I'm exposing all the secrets of all the teachers into the Aquarian age and give us all these things in the gong and all that, well, it was a package you can't turn down. So I began to, um, my career then, uh, rather than an actor and a director as a yoga teacher. Mm. Wow. And, um, I, from what I gather in those early days when you were playing um, and Yogi Bhajan used to play, he used to play quite loud back then. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Well, mm, playing loud is good therapy uh, if you don't do it too loud too long mm. uh, because of the fact that you have 26 uh, hairs in your cochlea, you see in... Mm -hmm. And uh, if they swoon and you begin to let the sounds go directly into the auditory cortex at the back of the head, you may develop what is called tinnitus, or ringing of the ears. So uh, with any job, but I especially know with uh, Enos uh, Broder that this constant hitting of the gong, those large sounds, um, you need to have some relief from it. So uh, I think that when you make a gong, do, do you sometimes put something in your ears so that it isn't so loud when you hammer? Of course. Yes. Yeah, sometimes. Don, it was one of the questions, it's why I kind of came around to it, was that, you know, playing the gong over a long period of time, how does one maintain one's hearing without it getting damaged? What would... But uh, simply this is that most of the people, when they start to play the gong, they turn their backs to the so-called audience and they uh, face the gong and play up close and personal and get all the nice gong juice coming into them at a very close distance like they hear. Well, after a little while, we begin to not hear it, so we play it louder. Mm. And what happens is that if you play too loud, too long. So we have different methods. We now play with our backs to the gong. Mm -hmm. We understand that when we play facing the gong like that, that the front chakras are all getting innervated. Uh, so by playing with your back to the gong, then the, uh, the ears are relaxed, are playing at the side of the gong and listening to the gong as it explores the acoustical space. You can't really do that when you're right up close to the gong. So that's only one technique to play. So opening gong clears up to uh, other other ways. Um, mm. Helps helps relieve that pressure on the ear, but it also mm. has a lot of other benefits as well. Mm. Yeah. Okay. And Hal said, of course, when we're doing. Um, remote gonging, like we, a lot of us are now, we're playing on the internet and we're sending it through Zoom. Headphones are a really good way to kind right, of I'm glad you get the best, best sound. All right, what happens? Broder, uh, what happens when you listen to the gong through your headphones or let's say through your uh, iPhone or through a radio? Uh, does it have the same effect? And if not, what kind no, of effect does it have? I, I don't think so. There's something missing. It's just, um, it's, I think, two dimensions instead of three dimensions. Or, uh, yeah, you have to feel a gong, I think. It's, and it's not possible when you listen to a recording of a gong. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I, um, I, I've got a couple of CDs. I've got one of Mark's CDs, brother. And sometimes I put it on on a night and it sends me to sleep. Yeah, that's gone. okay. The, 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 name, deep sleep. Yeah. The, the name of the CD yeah. is Deep Sleep. I, I tried it <laughs> yeah. and I just <laughs> slept out. <Yeah. laughs> 
<laughs> but but it's uh, the sound is different than the uh, gong sound. So yeah, it, it's also it's gong different. sound, of course, but uh, it's not a direct gong sound. So my mother yeah. used to say "schlaf and see good." Yeah, and so it's a good sleep. It's a very good sleep. A different quality sleep. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Okay, so as time has its way, um, it's slipped us by. And we're almost for our hour. We've got two minutes left. Well, so don't that just... Did they just ask questions from the audience? Or they didn't? Well, I've, lots of the questions I've been asking have been coming in through the chat. All right. So we have to get used to using chat. Yeah, everybody's sending questions by chat. And so I'm, I'm fielding them in. Um, has anybody in the group got a burning question that they'd like to ask Broder and Innes or Don before we go? If you want to put your hand up, I'll try and unmute you. Uh, as te oh, there's Aidan. Let me say hello to Aidan. Hi, Aidan. Hi, Bob. How are you doing? Hi, How are you oh, doing? Fine, thank you. Yeah. Yes, good to see you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hello, John. Hi, Aidan. Are you just tuning in now? No, no I've been, been listening been... to you all the time. Have you really? But I had, a, I, I did have a little lunch while I was talking, uh, while you were talking. Yeah. I've, yeah, I'm trying to learn how to be on camera, Aidan. Can you believe that? I, I had my <laughs> breakfast here; it's getting cold, yeah. but I'm afraid oh, to yeah. eat on camera. Is yeah. anybody got anything against that? No. Make everybody hungry. I see you've had your makeup done. Who does your makeup? <laughs> I did the makeup on. Um, no, no, no. Looking good, Don. Looking yeah. great. Thank you very much. Yeah. How's New York treating you? Everything's good. good. Yeah? Yeah. Good. The, Aiden. The, yes, Bob. You're, you're going to come on and be one of our guests. As, uh, I'm supposed to be, yes. Uh, as, as, yeah. You know, sometime in the future when you can yeah. hit me. No, no. I was talking to your agent. And oh, your right. agent, <laughs> yeah, your agent says your fee is extortionate. We just can't afford you. <laughs> so so we're, we're trying to I do wait. a deal on it. I'll waive the fee. I'll waive the fee. <laughs> waive the fee. I, I, okay. I have a little gong to show Broda. Go on, let's have a look. While we're waiting for Aiden, I just want to say that um, it is now 1030. The time, the hour is done. I just want to throw two things in really quickly. Um, Thursday, we've got a special guest. Um, oh, there we go. <laughs> that's Aiden's gone. Hi, that's lovely. Isn't that nice? Did, did you make that, Aiden? No. Uh, this this one is uh, this one is uh, better. Oh oh yeah. yeah. I got my headphones on, Aiden. I think you just deafened me. <laughs> <laughs> so it's good to see you both, Broda, Ennis. Yeah. I know we, we have never met, but no doubt uh, we, we will. Oh, I think so. I think so. Yeah. We're going we're gonna to have a road trip, Aidan. I'll take you. We'll go over in the van. <laughs> okay. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. I'm going to say bye-bye, Aidan. Lots of love. And we're going to just wind up the day. We'll see you soon. Yeah. Okay. okay. Let me just skip back. So I'm getting used to all this. Bob, just to finish yeah. up, we've got um, Stacy Bliss joining us on Thursday. She has a PhD and it's sure to be very, we'll get some really good questions coming in for Thursday for Stacy um, and Don. And just to remind people to continue to use the chat, let people know that the um, Gong Talk is accessible for all and to, we have a really nice turnout today. So thank you all for mm. participating. And Can Bob, I make a last request before it's over with. Uh, please also give uh, give her your uh, email and what city in the world that you are uh, gonging at at this time. Okay. Lovely. So we normally leave with a little shruti done. Um, we're two minutes over, but what about leaving us with a lovely little affirmation for the day? What, what, what can we take away from the session? Uh, I, don't, I don't know. You have something? Go ahead. Oh, well, 
What about a shruti then? We like we like to end with you. Give us a little shruti, a little gong shruti. Blessed am I. Freedom, 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 freedom am I. I am the infinite. I am the infinite. the infinite. We are the infinite in our soul. Well, we can find no beginning. We can find no end. All is all is ourselves. Beautiful. Thank you, Baba. Um, can we just unmute everybody quickly? I don't know how to unmute everybody, but somebody else does. Everybody's unmuted. I want to say goodbye to everyone. Baba, let's say goodbye to everybody. Yao Lins. Bye, everybody. Goodbye. We love you. Bye. 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 Bye.